Welcome to another Maintenance Monday. This week we're talking about refrigerators and not the residential style refrigerators or 12 volt compressor. We're gonna specifically concentrate on the two stage or two way or three way refrigerators that you would find on most campers. That would be the electric, LP, and 12 volt heating elements for a camp style refrigerator, okay? So we're gonna concentrate on Dometic and Norcold. There are other companies that make them, but they're the, the two top kings, so to speak, in the land of uh, RV refrigerators. So I'm gonna be kind of going off of some of my notes from uh, last year's training session that we had. We always have a, a yearly training session that we do for a recurrent training, and I'd like to pass on some of the information that I learned from that that usually are only privy to the uh, technicians side of things. So I'm giving you kind of an insight look at uh, how we are able to troubleshoot a refrigerator cooling issue. The ANSI, which is the American uh, National Standard Institute, got together with Norcold and Dometic and they created a standard for the refrigerator and how it was supposed to perform, okay? So for a eight cubic foot you should be able to maintain 43 degrees at 110 degrees Fahrenheit ambient temperature. So that's outside temperature acting on the fridge itself. For a six cubic foot refrigerator is 43 degrees at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. No idea why those numbers are different. I pressed Dometic on that and they couldn't give me an answer. That's just what ANSI came up with and how they developed the standard. Now, when you go up to the 18 cubic foot big double door fridge freezer, still the standard RV fridge, it's still in that 43 degree range. It's still supposed to be able to handle 43 degrees. Now, if you look at the FDA, which regulates residential refrigerators, you're looking at 38 degrees, okay? So 38 degrees is the standard for a home refrigerator. Why the difference? No idea. But food should be kept between, especially meat products, less than 40 degrees is the safe zone. Anything above that, now you're getting into kind of weird territory. The freezer should be 16 degrees or lower. And on all Dometic refrigerators, anything to start making ice, if you're one of the lucky ones that has an ice maker in your fridge, you need to be at least 12 degrees in order for it to start triggering the ice maker to work. Okay, so why am I telling you this? Quite simply put, in order for them to meet those ANSI standards, you have to have installation standards. Those installation standards are spelled out by the companies that build the appliance. They then sell the appliance to the RV manufacturer and that RV manufacturer then installs it, hopefully based on the installation manual, okay? The way that it's supposed to be installed. If everything works out perfect, the fridge works, no hiccups, no problems, the installer of the RV manufacturer installs it in the coach, motorhome, trailer, doesn't matter what it is, installs it properly, then your refrigerator should work exactly how it was designed to work maintaining the temperatures in which it was supposed to maintain however we all know that in the rv industry things are not done to standards okay there are issues that arise now again i'm not pointing a finger at one rv manufacturer specifically but i'm just saying as an industry as a whole the reason why rv technicians have job security is because of installation error is supposed to be three degrees left to right, six degrees front to back. So that means that the fridge is capable of handling a nose down attitude or what they call rake, um, where the nose is lower than the rear for say motorhomes. A lot of motorhomes, especially gas motorhomes will have a rake where the nose is lower. So they design that in so that way as you're sitting without using levelers, without using any stabilizing type stab jacks, as we call them in the industry, to support the coach, the trailer, motorized coach, whatever it would be. It's designed specifically to 
be used without any hiccups. Now, going into what does that mean for your operation, okay? Well, these refrigerators are filled with a ammonia and water solution with a gas under pressure. And how it works is it uses a heating element. It heats the cooling unit on the back of the fridge that turns the liquid into a gas. It then goes up the set of tubes and as it's falling back through the tubes, it's an absorption style fridge which pulls the heat out. So it basically takes the heat, absorbs it into the, the coils in the back and removes the heat that way. It also removes moisture, just like your air conditioner would. It evaporates moisture, it goes into a drain pan, and out the back of the fridge it goes. Very important to level your coach when you're sitting for long periods of time, especially you full-timers. You know, as I full-time as well with my family on my RV, I need to be able to make sure that I'm close to level as possible. What happens when you are off level, okay, and you go past the six degrees front to rear, three degrees left to right, uh, it actually will boil the water off from the ammonia solution at a different rate, and then it creates crystallization within the tubing. And when it crystallizes enough, it will create a blockage, which means then you will be basically needing a new cooling unit. So the entire back of the fridge has to be replaced. There is no way of actually getting those crystallized particles out. There's lots of people in the RV industries that want to say, oh, you can do it this way and you can hit it this way and you can shake it and you can, no. Trust me, I've been doing this for a while. You can't do it. You have to replace the back. It's the only way to do it. You can drive on level. That's okay because it's short lived. It's designed to change and go with the movement of the vehicle. That's the fridge is designed for an RV. It's designed to handle bouncing and pounding. Maybe not on our roadways the way they are now, um, these, this day and age, but it's designed to handle movement um, much more than a residential fridge. 44 degrees to 60 degrees is the range that tells you that you're having a venting issue. If you start to see the internal temperatures rising in the refrigerator, then you're going to start suspecting that you have a flow issue, meaning the airflow is not flowing properly behind the fridge, cooling, okay? So what it boils down to is, is they, they build the box for the biggest fridge in the industry. Mm -hmm. So if it's gonna have an 18 cubic foot refrigerator and one's bigger than the other, they're gonna build it to the bigger size so that they don't have to go back through and re-engineer wherever it's going. So they build the box bigger than they need and then they can convert that box. And now with so many different upgrades with residential fridges, 12 volt compressor fridges, this fridge, that fridge, you know, where you have islands, you have peninsulas, you have all of these things that are in the kitchen, they have to take an account for that. So let's talk about clearances, all right, real quickly. The top of the fridge, doesn't matter whether you have it mounted in a slide out or in a solid wall, must be zero. You can't have any space above it. So that means it has to be boxed off, walled off, insulated. The side has no more than a quarter inch on each side. Now think about this. Why would you want it zero? Well, all that heat in the back of it, because of it pulling the heat out of the fridge and pushing it outside, it has to go somewhere. If you give it a space to go, it's gonna go around the fridge that heat just is going to sit there and it's going to come back into the fridge through the sidewalls. Even though they have real thick foam and insulation on the refrigerator to keep it cold, it has to work harder now. The back of the fridge, no more than one inch from the cooling tubes to the back wall. So you don't want any more than one inch of space between the back wall and the cooling tubes. The reason they, they really want it closer, but they're allotting for that space for heat so it doesn't burn or char anything. You'll have two vents on the side wall. You'll have a lower vent and an upper vent. You'll see them on the side, the slide wall, and it creates a venturi effect. 
And so it basically, as heat rises, it pulls the cool air in and cools the fins, cools the, the unit on the back of the fridge, and then the heat escapes out the top vent. Keep in mind, again, installation, the box is bigger than a lot of the slide outs. So they make it taller, wider than the biggest fridge so they can have options to put it in there, to offer you as the consumer an option. All right, so to understand how the refrigerator works, we need to understand how it circulates air movement. Even if there wasn't a fan mounted to the ceiling of the fridge, it still has a way it circulates air because of the coils and the way that the coils move and zigzag back and forth behind the fridge, pulling the heat out and pulling the heat to the outside of the coach, there's a circulation process, okay? So keeping in mind that for every one second you have this fridge door open, any of them, whether it's the right, the left, or if you only have one door, for every one second, it's one minute recovery time. So if you look at it in a 60 seconds, it's one hour. So opening this up, you can see the fins in the back, it's pulling moisture out, they're cold. So it's pulling the heat out. There's a fan up here, which is pulling air up and pushing it towards the fins, which is grabbing the heat that might be congregating up in this area and it's pushing it towards the fins. It's also helping to circulate the air within the fridge. Now, not all models have this. Some models do. Another thing that you can see in my fridge that I set up purposely is you should never have food out against your walls. So these things here are keeping airflow from moving. So we want to move things away from the walls so you're not blocking. But you also don't want to have everything tightly congregated either. So don't overfill your fridge as well. I tend to put my meats and cheeses and things up here where they're more sensitive to temperature because it's going to be cooler up here because the fan is sucking all the heat and blowing it out. The cooling fins are going to be a lot cooler as well. Down here, your fruits and vegetables are going to not freeze the further down you go with them. Once the fridge has been installed or we're doing a diagnostic on it, we're required to do a substance temperature test. All right? And what that means is that we will take a cup like this. What we're going to do is regular tap water. Put it in here. Okay? And if you want it spill proof, that's why I recommend a bottle. Put your cup in. And then 24 hours later, you pull it out with a thermometer and it'll tell you what the temperature of the fridge is. This is the only way that you can truly test it. And this is what they require us to do when we test a fridge to see if it's operational. Okay. So let's talk about the freezer. The freezer, uh, as you can tell, is not a, a uh, self defrosting refrigerator because you can see I've got the snow show on the back wall. Uh, if you want your ice cream to stay cold, ice cream, I leave it on the bottom of the, the, cold, the chill plate all the way to the back. And that is what keeps my ice cream cold. Uh, right now, the temperature in here is definitely below freezing because my ice is still frozen does have a fan at the top. Again, it's sucking the heat in through the top, blowing it to the chill plate in the back. And it's that's how it stays circulating. Um, but my meats are frozen. My butter's frozen. Things are frozen because I've got it working efficiently. Okay. Uh, to defrost that, you just take everything out. You let it sit there for about 20 minutes with the fridge running. Don't turn the fridge off and things will start to melt and then you can just scrape it out. That's what I recommend. Now, there are, Dometic does make a frost-free refrigerator, okay? That frost-free refrigerator, the way it works is when you power it up, within the first 60 hours, it will do nothing but run. Every 48 hours after the first initial startup, okay, so the first startup is 60 hours, then it goes to a two hour cycle, 
gets rid of the frost, moves all of that, and then it cools back down for 48 hours. And it will continue to do that cycle until you shut the fridge off. Or you have a power failure. Then it starts that cycle over again, okay? So there were complaints. People were saying, my fridge is heating up. I, I can't figure out what's going on. Well, what was happening was they were are cooling the fridge down and typically one or people in and out of the fridge most of the day lunch midday for snacks you know you're camping you're enjoying things dinner that's generally where the fridge is starting to work for its two hour defrost so if you want to avoid that only if you have the Dometic model number this you can start it at two or three o'clock in the afternoon and then it will stay on a overnight cycle where it will start to defrost when you're sleeping and it will quickly recover. All right, so temperature settings. Norcold has one through nine. Okay, when you press the button on the Norcold, by the way, guys, this is called an eyebrow board. The reason they called it an eyebrow board was because originally they were installed on the top of the fridge. Um, now Norcold decided that, hey, for short people like me, um, I can see the display better versus uh, Dometic who still likes to put them on the top. The temperature is displayed one through nine for the Norcold and one through five for Dometic. My fridge is so dialed in, so tuned in and got it installed properly that I can leave this literally even at a 90 degree day, I can leave it at six or seven and it will freeze food in my fridge. It's working that well. Again, taking care of those installation errors are so important, okay? And that's why I hit home on this a lot with customers that I talk to. So know your fridge, the information that came with the coach has everything you need to know. If you bought a used coach and you do not have the information that you need on it, uh, you can call Norcold as a consumer or Dometic and they'd be happy to get you the maintenance manuals, service manuals, and operation manuals. You just have to ask. Um, the operations manuals are always there for download easily on any of the Norcold's websites or Dometic. And they're very good about getting that into consumers' hands. Okay, so we're outside now. This is a slide wall. So you have the lower vent and the upper vent. To take this off, you can sometimes use your hand. If you don't have the option for that and it's too hard, then you can use a screwdriver, but you can usually just twist them like that. The vent will pop from the top and lift out. There are two different style refrigerators for RV fridge. There's a two-way and a three-way. The two-way fridge is LP and shore power driven. So it uses 120 volts. For your three-way fridge, the three-way adds a 12 volt element. Your boards again are split boards. Okay, so this orange wire is your electrode and a heat sensor for when you're running LP. This is your 12 volt wires. Your ground is on the left and your hot 12 volt lead is on the right this is your 120 volt uh, wiring you can see a little ground wire coming out of there this runs down and over my plug is in around the corner and that's where my fridge plugs in at kind of hard to see but uh, that's how it works there are two fuses inside of here there's usually for the dual element fridges, for the big fridges are gonna have two elements, which means four wires coming off of the board going to the heating side of it. And it's gonna have a five amp fuse typically. It's a 120 volt fuse, so you can't just go down to an auto parts store and buy that if, it, if you need to replace it. On this side, generally will be anywhere from a uh, two amp to a five amp 12 volt fuse which protects this lead and then you also have another one on your electric panel itself uh, usually it's 15 amps so this is just a basic overview okay now if you look in the side here you'll see insulation 
and that insulation is tight and I stuffed a lot of that in there because you want it to be tight against the walls same thing back on that side it's tight and that'll be that way all the way up the wall okay and in just a moment I'm going to show you the top vent and show you how it should be set up as well okay so we're at the top vent now and you can see how I have the baffle here this was factory installed but I did make modifications to it and you can see where it's sitting it's it's about a half an inch which is the most you want below the the fins these are your your cooling fins okay if you also look up in here uh, there's a upper baffle which is metal and I stuffed insulation all through and around that to keep the heat from getting in and above up in here where the top of my freezer is that's why my freezer stays as cold as it does now when you're up in here looking around and playing with things this is a very very hot tube you will burn yourself if you're not careful as you can see this is the calibrated part for where the fridge and um, uh, the water and ammonia solution starts to descend back down this is your temperature sensor for your cooling fans nor cold with the 18 cubic foot refrigerator has two cooling fans down below you can see right there the label should be pointing up to you if you look at it you can also get an additional cooling fan if you want and you can place it right out here which will help suck the air and push it out the vent when I first got up here it was really hot you could feel the heat just rushing out because um, it's working the way it should and it's pulling heat out and then back in the back here you can see how I stuffed insulation up in those corners so there's no way that heat can get anywhere up and around the refrigerator box and that's what you want and a lot of times when they put these I've done this a lot with a lot of uh, customers RVs you can see how there's gaps they don't always put it against the side wall of the slide or the, the solid wall where the fridge is mounted. This is as near perfect as I could get for an installation of this fridge. Okay, so talking about installation errors. First of all, this is too deep of a cavity. So there's nothing to move the hot air out to the vent. So it congregates up in this corner. Next, you can probably see the insulation right there hot spot right there hot spot and up there hot spot and nothing to guide the air hot air out to the vent also where's the baffle supposed to be you know, about a half an inch to a quarter inch below the fins This fridge, I'm surprised if it even works. Not to mention, somebody put the 12 volt lines for wherever they're running right there behind the back. This is a repair that uh, came in. You can see that there's still gaps where the heat can make its way past and congregate. The insulation's not bad on this side, but could be better. There's still gaps up here where the heat can get through. But really, this is going to be your installation error here. Heat can get up behind that. This section isn't sealed, so heat can congregate below and underneath this panel here. And this is a little bit more... I know it's hard to tell, but this is a little bit more than a half an inch. So this really should be slightly higher or just slightly below the fins. But for the most part, this is not This bad. is a solid wall. So if you look at the top, you're going to see a vent at the top. That vent is the top portion of this fridge. So anytime there's a solid wall and there's no slide out, You'll have this style vent on the lower section for intake and then that vent at the top. The only thing that changes between the side double side vents and a roof vent 
is the roof vent, usually there's gonna be a pocket, sometimes about this much, which is about 12 to eh, about 12 inches at the top of the fridge. And sometimes they don't seal that properly. When they forget to seal that top section off, now what happens is all the air congregates at the top and circulates around the top of your freezer, which then reduces efficiency. Can you kind of see the idea, the theme going here, what I've been talking about today, is that if you can't direct the flow of heat upward and outward, then it congregates around the box of the refrigerator. And if it's trying to work harder to maintain the cold and you're saying, I want more from you, and you keep hitting the button to raise the temperature setting and it's still not producing, this is most likely why. Eventually, they fail. They just can't keep up. Uh, hopefully this gave you some insight as to why your fridge may or may not be working. I hope that you got a lot out of, of this segment. I know I kind of jam-packed a lot of information so if I missed anything that you're still wondering about or you still have a question about something, feel free to comment below or on any of the other platforms that I post on. And as always, remember, no matter what's going on, enjoy the journey.